I am now pleased to report my software is full of bugs, just like intended. Some look interesting, some look like space freighters, and all of them can evolve through Auto Evo. I've done a lot of work rethinking how parts attach and organisms are assembled, but I don't think any of the details are very interesting to talk about, so instead I'm going to give you some of my Auto Evo conundrums, and you can join me in contemplating. One problem that was brought to my attention is that, because the Mish trees constructed based on species that were around in the last generation, now they're going to be carnivores for Mishes for preying on species that actually went extinct a generation ago. I experimented with a layered approach to Mish construction. Add the autotrophs, add species for that, add trophic layer 1, add species for that, and so on and so forth, but I ended up finding a much easier solution. If instead I just switch the order of operations so that the Mish mutates new species according to the old selection pressures, then changes the Mish to have the new selection pressures based on the new Mishes, and then just insert everything, now everything will match based on stuff that's still alive. This, however, had the odd side effect, that you can now get a straggler predator species that holds out in just one Mish, the one feeding off of itself. To solve this, I've added a new operation to Auto Evo, the Prune Step. The Prune Step is very simple. It goes through every Mish one by one, and if that Mish is of a kind that depends on another species to exist, it checks that species is still around. If it's not, the Mish and all its children are removed. Once I had interesting things evolving, next I needed to make sure they didn't just evolve all the time. In nature, different innovations appear millions of years apart, and the random ordering of certain breakthroughs can greatly impact the results of evolution. Right now my solution is simple and hackish. Some mutation strategies have a chance to just not come up with any mutations on any given call to the function. It works for making runs of auto-evil more distinct, but it has a lot of weird side effects. There's a concept in software design known as referential transparency. Essentially, it means that if I call this function one, ten times, next week, or underwater, the function still does the exact same thing for the exact same inputs. Math, for example, works this way. One plus one equals two no matter how many times you ask. Software programs as a whole, in practice, are pretty much never referentially transparent, but the trick is to try to keep it referentially transparent as far up the chain as possible, because then you can minimize the amount of chaos underneath you need to deal with. A mutation strategy's one job, some would even say it's single responsibility, is to list the possible mutations for a selection pressure. The Misha's job is to pick which one of these to use. The mutation strategy code holding back some possibilities means, among other things, that the shape of the tree can now increase or decrease the rate at which new mutations can occur in nature. Let's put a pin in this issue, because I've got some ideas for what I want to do about it. Next video, expect me to talk all about how none of them worked. Another interesting find I had is that once I started adding defensive adaptations, it was the predatory species that would always be the first to evolve them. Obviously, this is in part a side effect of the universal don't get eaten Mish discussed in the last video, and it's partially because the herbivore Mish has additional predators that might be more demanding of those of carnivores, and obviously... After the better part of a day trying to confidently change my simulation to make nature work the way I wanted it to, I had to finally admit that no. I didn't really understand what was going on, and instead I invested in coding a more detailed debugging tool that could tell me exactly what's going on in the AutoEvo simulator variable by variable, and figure it out from there. The actual answer was pretty great. The heuristic for being a predator involves actually being able to beat your prey in a fight. It makes a lot of sense. The problem is, there were no weapons in the simulation for the predators to do more damage, so instead the only advantage they could get over their prey was evolving better defenses. In this universe, the best shark was a turtle. What looked like the sign of a failed simulation was actually the rules of nature working perfectly, just under different physics. Next up is combining the evolution and the gameplay. I've had an interesting idea about how to frame the story of this game, give the evolution an objective, and finally figure out how to have the player actually guide the evolution. So hopefully, if it works, my next video is going to be about how I do that.